Harlow. Thank you, Jolly. And so at long last, we're getting a pedestrian crossing right outside my shop, too. And about time. Wait till he gets there. Oh, do you have any food there? All bound to. Morning, all. Come on, Tom. Come on, Charlie. That's my luck. Now I'll have a pint. Great, Stimardo. You're a fine one, Tom. Yeah, take it back. Tell what I don't want it. Is there anything for me this morning, Tom? Oh, yes, Mr. Glenville. A couple of big ones. Oh, company reports. Morning, all. Morning. Morning. Oh, hello, Alan. How are you? Fine, David. Long time no see. Well, I'm in the chair. What's yours? Oh, it's a wonderful idea. I have the usual. <laughs> Morning, David. Morning, Bates. Usual bit, Charlie. All right. Well, what's new? What's new? Plenty. Huh? Remember those rumours about the electricity people building a power line right across the valley? Yeah. Well, they're going to. I don't know that, Charlie. Well, it's right here in the paper. Right there. Notice is hereby given that application has been made by the Central Electricity Generating Board to the Minister of Power for his consent to the erection of a 275,000 volt overhead line. That means pylons. Stuck way up in the air. And spoiling the view. But does it say where these things are going? It only states where the plans of the line can be examined, and that's at the town hall. Well, I'm going down to have a look at them. That's a good idea. You know, I don't like the sound of this at all. Yes, but why do you suppose they're putting them through our area? That's the point. Why not take it across the North Valley? That land is not as good as ours. What I'd like to know is why can't they put these lines underground, out of sight? Why must they shove them up in the air anyway? Well, I think it's a bit much, these things going up all over the place. We have to see what we can do about it. Oh, hello, John. Uh, well, I'm two points, please, sorry. Have you heard about these pylons they're going to put up? Yes, I have. As a matter of fact, this is Mr. Sinclair. Oh, morning. He's morning. a way leaves officer working on that very thing. Way leaves officer? What's that? Well, let me put you into the picture. Way leaves is a very old English word which goes back to the 14th century. It gives landowners a means of protecting their property. Before anybody can cross private land, permission must be obtained and suitable terms agreed. We've been having a go at it this morning. Perhaps you'd like to explain, Mr. Sinclair. Well, oh, certainly. Cheerio. Cheers. Well, when a scheme has been approved and we know the provisional route the line is going to take, it's my job to contact all the parties over whose land the line will travel and to negotiate with them for permission to erect towers within their boundaries. Hence my title, Way Leaves Officer. Well, naturally, my job brings me into contact with many different types of people. One of them might be a farmer, like our friend here. Well, I discuss the matter with him, point out to him the positioning of the new towers, indicate the amount of work to be done, and that we'll cause as little inconvenience as possible. <laughs> we realize that pylons are a nuisance in arable fields. But you know, one has to keep things in perspective. When erected, the base of the larger pylons are wide enough for a plough and tractor to go underneath. If a field is used for grazing or pasture, within a short period of the tower being erected, things are back to normal. And a cow may even use it as a scratching post. But don't get the idea that we're out simply to erect scratching posts for cows. <laughs> as you probably know, the demand for electricity is always growing. To meet this demand, the Central Electricity Generating Board must plan, not only for the present, but also for the future. Now, consider that it takes about four years to build a power station. Long before that can happen, however, there are many other questions which have to be decided. First, the most economical site for the power station, with its future contribution to the overall supply, must be selected. Then, building permissions have to be granted. From every new power station, overhead lines have to be built across the countryside to connect up with the national grid power network. Permission for the erection of these lines has to be obtained. You know, it may take up to eight years for some of these schemes to become operational. Tell me, mister, why don't they put these cables on the ground and out of sight? Well, the reason is that it's so terrifically expensive. High voltage underground cables have to be manufactured with expensive insulation. The laying of the cables causes many other problems, such as trenching across roads and causing traffic delays. Across farms and woodlands, it means swathing through existing crops for a width of about oh, 25 feet. Now for this, naturally, the farmer would have to be compensated. And the trenching itself calls for expensive equipment and a large labor force. On the other hand, overhead lines cause much less damage. The erection is simple, 
and the contract for a given distance can be completed in a much shorter period of time. Underground cabling would cost 10 to 15 times as much as overhead lines, which work out now at anything between 10 and 54,000 pounds per mile. Multiply that 10 or 15 times and you have a tidy sum involved, all of which you as consumers would have to pay. And I'm sure you feel you're paying quite enough as it is. I'll say we are. You ought to see my bills. Well, this question of spoiling the view is always cropping up. But I do assure you that the generating board pays very close attention to the matter. Before any work is started on a new line, the ground is carefully surveyed. For a job which may take many months to do before any construction work is done. The route must then be examined by all interested parties, such as the Town and Country Planning Authorities, National Parks Commission, Army, Navy and Air Force, Nature Conservancy Committees, and so on. Now, if there are any suggestions put forward which would help to make the line less obtrusive, they are carefully considered. And you know, very often the line is rerouted. For example, very often the quickest route for a line would be along a ridge where it would be silhouetted against the skyline. To avoid this, we should try to route the line on a lower land, where it would be difficult to see against the ridge. Now, this often means, of course, that the line is slightly longer. But there are limits to this kind of consideration. At all times, the cost of the consumer must be considered. You're telling me. What I paid last quarter, I reckon I could buy a couple of power stations. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all love a grumble about costs. But the generating board's duty is not only to supply you with electricity, but to see that you get it as cheaply as possible. If a farmer or landowner has any reasonable objections, these are always taken into account. Every proposal is weighed in with the overall scheme, so that the best result is obtained. Another consideration is the many airfields dotted about the country. For reasons of aircraft safety, these places must be given a wide berth. You know, you may not realize it, but there are more than 230 power stations dotted about all over England and Wales. Yet in order to meet the nation's ever-increasing demand for power, and to provide for the future, the generating board must always be planning and building new power stations. Power is regulated by eight area grid control centers in different parts of the country. And overall, there is a national control in London. Now these centers are able to transfer power from their areas to other areas. At the National Control Centre in London, a complete picture of what is happening in any part of the country, day or night, is shown on this schematic diagram. And if there is a sudden heavy demand for more power in one part of the country, this centre can cope with it by bringing a bigger supply from any other area. You know, you compare this network to a system where the water goes in and is then piped off to many places. Incidentally, this country's interconnection of generated power is the largest under single control in the world. The British grid is essentially a multi-purpose system. You see, electricity cannot be stored like gas. It must be generated and sent to the consumers each instant that it is required by them. When demands for power are low, the network is used to make large savings by using the output of the newer and more efficient stations and shutting down the less efficient ones. This operation alone can save up to 40 million pounds a year. To quote Earl Walgrave, who spoke in the House of Lords, electricity in itself is one of the greatest amenities of modern life. It is essential to our expanding industry, to our agricultural industry, and to public health and safety. The task of ministers, of local authorities, of the electricity boards, and indeed of every citizen too, is to ensure that by as careful planning as possible, and by as much constructive criticism as possible, a proper balance is maintained between the preservation of the beauty of the country and an efficient and economic power system, which is the very lifeblood of the nation. Believe me, I am in sympathy with you. No one particularly wants to see these things stretching across the landscape. Yet everybody wants more and more electric power. Mm -hmm. It's no good saying, oh, we can do without it somehow. The so-called good old days of the past are something we really want to forget. You know, you can't stop progress halfway. Like the wind and the weather, it will go on and on. The task of the Central Electricity Generating Board is immense. 
the building of new power stations, both nuclear and conventional, to supply the demand of the future is going ahead. But with every new project, they have to bring the generated power to the people who demand it. And always this means transmission lines. In the future, new transmission lines will be built to carry 400,000 volts. The towers will be higher than the 275,000 volt towers, but this new system will take the place of three lines of towers, 275,000 volts, so contributing to the preservation of visual amenities. Maybe in the future, they'll be able to send electricity without these lines. In the meantime, count your blessings. Cheer. Bye. Time, ladies and gentlemen, if you please. Oh, well, any closing, well, you heard what the gentleman said. Count your blessings. <laughs> Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling.